All right, everyone, welcome to another BuzzBeat podcast. If you're watching this on YouTube, we appreciate the support you guys have given us on Buy Me A Coffee. This is a exclusive Buy Me A Coffee video for our supporters. If you're listening on the podcast version, the video of this was released a handful of days ago, so you can go back and access that on buymeacoffee.com slash BuzzBeat. I'll be joined by Brian today where... I'm going to ask him some questions about another very interesting prospect, JT Thor. It feels like his stock is all over the place, Brian. Um, you know, what, what are your thoughts on the fact that this guy, you know, I, I've seen like I've seen second round grades on this guy. And I've also seen, you know, maybe somebody has him in their top 15. It's crazy. Yeah, uh, I, I think Thor is one of those guys that you know, wasn't one of the top sort of like incoming freshman recruits, right? So, I mean, obviously he, he was a big recruit coming from out of Georgia into Auburn but because he wasn't, you know, a top 15 guy or whatever. There's probably just like a little bit less buzz on heading into the season. Um, you know, he played on a team where someone like Sharif Cooper was uh, probably like a more notable and recognizable like draft prospect. And in, even to your point, like there's a chance Thor could go above uh, Cooper in the, the 2021 draft, uh, amazingly enough. At the same time, too, I don't you know, there was no guarantee that Thor was definitely going to come out and then definitely stay in the draft this year. So th I think a lot of this has happened pretty quickly over the last couple of months where it was recognized that, like, yes, Thor is a prospect. Um, yes, he's going to test the draft waters. And OK, now, yeah, he actually is staying in the draft. And he's been further evaluated more and more since then. Something like the combine was probably a big boost to his stock too, just because he went in, you know, went through all the measurements and, uh, you know, among all the players at the combine and certainly among the, the big guys, you know, he did quite well in terms of his length. And we can go over some of those numbers on, um, you know, on this recording today. Um, but I also think, too, and, and this is something that uh, PD Webb has talked about, and I, I want to give him credit for it, of just like the thought was when Thor initially announced that he was going to test the draft waters and, you know, there wasn't – it wasn't confirmed whether he was going to stick in or not. That wasn't, like, certain until probably about, I don't know, five, six weeks ago, four weeks ago, something like that. Um, but just, like, the thought process with someone like Thor is – you know, if he went back to Auburn and like was planning to go to the NBA in the 2022 draft, you know, he's a first round pick a year from now. Right. So instead of waiting and hoping to get him a year from now, teams that are interested in controlling that development year while he's still young, like JT Thor is still just 18 um, and won't turn 19 until next month, um, you get to control that year of development. And so teams that can look at someone like Thor, see or envision a type of you know prospect and player they'd like to have in their system, well then you can give him the um, you know a, a, you know give him a promise that you know you're gonna you're gonna draft him at you know a certain pick or whatever, with the hopes of knowing that like if he had gone back to school and come out a year from now, well then you know maybe he's a lock for the lottery and he could still go in the lottery this year, um, or may, or maybe a little bit after it, but. Right. I like Thor a lot as a prospect, um, and I I like the the tools, the upside, all of that is there. I think one of the other reasons that causes it may perhaps some sort of like fluctuation or variance with Thor stock is again maybe not that much of a, a known commodity outside of like really like hardcore draft circles at least until about you know three four weeks ago around the combine. Um, but also you have a guy that while he has great tools and some interesting athletic, uh, um, uh, standpoints, he's, um, you know, not quite fully developed in terms of feel or decision-making. And so maybe depending on how certain people are going to, you know, balance and weigh those things, right. The athleticism and the tools, um, uh, against like a high, have, uh, you know, a, a prospect that has really good feel, you know, that probably causes, um, you know, uh, gaps in how he's going to be evaluated over the, over like a large group of people would be my guess. But I like Thor a lot of as, as a prospect and, and, and I'm, I'm high on him. And I, I think he's someone that NBA teams picking in the first, you know, 25 picks or so of the draft 
um, should be thinking about uh, w- with a lot, like with a lot of interest, because um, it's going to take some time. But he really could be a, a very good player, um, you know, a couple of years down the line. All right. Well, let's get into JT Thor a little bit more. Uh, you mentioned the combine, so we'll get to that first with his athletic ability. But first off, uh, 19 years old, uh, freshman out of Auburn. 9.4 points, five rebounds, 1.4 blocks. Some shooting numbers, he shot 53% on two-point shots, 20 of 24 on dunks, 44 of 67 at the rim. He shot 29.7% behind the arc and 74% from the free throw line. Uh, in terms of his athletic ability and the way that he moves, Brian, you know what can you tell me about maybe his, like, his measurables, his wingspan? Yeah. Just tell me about him as an athlete and, and how that's going to translate to the next level. Yeah, just looking at the combine measurements uh, with shoes, uh, height of you know six nine point uh, two five, wingspan of seven three and a quarter, that which was the second uh, w- uh, longest wingspan at the combine. Um, standing reach of nine two, which is a top five number at the combine, just behind kai jones uh three point zero second three quarter court sprint um that's very fast especially for a you know a, a front court player not uh you know not like a, a guard or whatever and again um there was some like la- there was like a lack of clarity with his age which is weird but but he is only 18 years old so he's you know he's young for this class too um in terms more of this just sort of like athleticism you know we just mentioned the length which is really really good but Big time, you know, uh, leaper, run, jump, athlete, had some of the most sort of like audacious dunk attempts in college hoops this season, um, you know, with his vertical and reach. It's it's almost hilarious to see just like how high and how far he could extend with the ball midair. Uh, very mobile, covers a lot of ground in space, which that's those have sort of become like the new buzz terms. Uh, especially with like big man defenders, I feel like, or, or, or like big wing defenders, ground coverage, um, flexible, coordinated laterally, can move in space. Um, so, yeah, really, really good athlete. Like he's raw. Like I said, he needs development. But the tools, the athletic traits, uh, they're all there and they're all really, really good. Yeah, offensively, he's a he's a very interesting prospect. He's got some versatility in how you can play him. And I'm a little bit more optimistic on his shot than maybe the numbers suggest at 29.7%. I, I feel like that number should go up. Tell me a little bit about him, you know, with his offensive game and and how he should be used on the next level. Yeah, I mean, you, Richie, you mentioned the, the three point shooting stroke. Like he's got a he's got a really pretty shot. Like really good form, good energy transfer. You know, lines up his feet to the hoop. Has that le- that nice lefty you know wrist snap. It's very smooth and you can see him like the shot versatility is there. Um, you know, you mentioned he shot just a, just a tick under 30% from deep, but on an impressive variety of looks like movement, three point shots coming off pin downs, uh, pick and pops, moving into space, being able to like reset and reload and get um, shots off good trail three point shooter. So he's got, again, a little bit more of the, the those like movement um, shooting capabilities uh, Auburn ran actions and after timeout stuff to get him looks coming off pin downs. I also think just a side note away from the shooting, like I think it's kind of cool that Auburn also used JT Thor as like uh, the trigger man, like the inbound passer on a lot of stuff too, um, which which maybe speaks to some of the, the passing and creation flashes that we saw. Maybe something else to sort of like just store away for later. But, you know, I like the three-point attempt rate that it was there. Um, six and a half three point attempts for 100 possessions. Um, you know, got up a fair amount of three point looks. And yeah, I mean, almost 30% of his shots were threes this season, which is nice. But even some of the stuff that, uh, you know, it's coming sort of like from the mid range, long, deep mid range, I think is sort of interesting. It can be used as an indicator towards sort of projecting out how he looks as a shooter, um, you know, has good touch has the ability to take, you know, mid-range face-up step backs. Not all of that was good. Um, and maybe we can talk about that a little bit in terms of, uh, you know, shot selection or or maybe even, you know, one of the disadvantages of how Auburn was using him. But, you know, was able to get it up from, you know, the 18, 20-foot range in a bunch of different ways to face-up step backs, face-up fadeaways, 
um, you know, being able to get to pump and, and get to his mid range shot. And I actually think like, um, yeah, like some of the stuff he did attacking closeouts was pretty good this year. Like has a couple different ball fakes that he can get to uh, does a nice job attacking t uh, top foot and in a straight line, he can get to the rim. Um, that's actually, I think when he shows some of his good, like short space, uh, you know, speed and a l just enough handle, but he can also get to that mid range shot. And, and yeah, I mean, he shoots the ball and like kind of moves like a wing, right? He really does. So um, I buy JT Thor as a shooter. Um, and, and I think like that's going to be a big part of his game is sort of like a, you know, a space four, a space four and a half, like however you want to label him positionally, but you're thinking of like a stretch big guy, like that's, that, that has some like ancillary skills and can, maybe take guys off the bounce too. And you can even get in, you know, run some movement shooting possessions for coming off down screens or flares. Um, but he can do all, like he showed flashes of all of that stuff this year, which for a 18 year old freshman is, is, uh, is pretty impressive. And like, is I think one of the most appealing aspects of JT Thor as a, as a prospect. Do you think, I mean, you, you mentioned a little bit on the offensive side, but do you think that he can create for himself or is he strictly going to be like a catch and shoot guy and, you know, just low usage in terms of, you know, how they use him on the offensive side? Yeah. Like I said, the, the his ability to like attack closeouts is good. And that feels like scalable, right? Like as a second side weapon, you know, playing in space or working off advantage, sort of like less of him trying to get his own shot in the mid range. Um, which is where some of like his bad shot selection came from this year. But there are definitely like creation flashes. Um, I mentioned again the 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 smooth transition going into his dribble drive, the attacking top foot, uh, the the various head fakes, shot fakes that he has, has a little bit of a handle, can put it on the deck a time or two, pick and pop, move into space, then go off the dribble curl off the screen. And again, there were some like decent passing reads. There were also some awful passes that he threw this year, right? Like, you know, him throwing, trying to throw a no look pass and then throwing it right to, <laughs> right to an opponent for a very easy steal. So um, I think it's like, if, if you're drafting JT Thor, I think your hope in your development process is going to, uh, include trying to develop him in a way where he will have some creation, um, you know, possible opportunities and possibilities, maybe not responsibilities quite yet. I mean, you obviously want to see how he, how he responds to, to doing that. Um, but it's just going to take time and, and take development and take a team sort of like investing in, in him in that way, because the, the feel isn't quite there, at least on a consistent basis right now. Um, but it is absolutely like something that could uh, could be a part of the package, especially if the three point shot in fact translates. And then that's something that he can, um, you know, eventually play off of. Let's flip it over to the defensive side of the court. Uh, there are some concerns on that end, but I think he still has a ton of promise. He's got the rim protection. He's got some anticipation off ball with some steals. He's light on his feet. Um, he does, he definitely does some good stuff on this end of the court. I do worry about his strength a little bit on, on both ends, uh, and maybe you can speak to that. But how impactful do you think he's going to be on this end of the court right away? Yeah, I think he has the chance to be right away. Um, <laughs> it might be tough just because, you know, NBA teams can, you know, can run him around in circles. And he, he really struggles closing out to shooters, right? I think that's sort of like when he looks his worst defensively, these really hard closeouts where he goes flying at somebody and, and it just gives up easy drives left and right, like literally. Um, and so I think, you know, once NBA teams, given how they run actions, giving the advantage creators, all of the shooting that's in, in, you know, close out attackers that are just dotting the perimeter. Um, you know, I, I do feel like, you know, in, in the ball movement, like that's going to be tough for him to sort of like come in right away. And yeah, I think he'll certainly have like highlight plays, but as far as like being like a reliable like rotation defender, um, I think that could be a little tough. But of course, because he covers so much ground, because of the length, because of the athleticism, he can cover for some of those mistakes, right? But just like the margins are so tight in in you know in the NBA, um, I think he's an active like help defender in the paint. 
showing on soft doubles, sliding to the baseline on drivers, like contesting at the rim, um, finished up this season with a, you know, almost 6% block rate, almost 2% steal rate. I think his like spatial awareness is pretty good in certain situations. Again, not on closeouts, but um, you know, sometimes his ability to sort of like rotate and switch around on multiple early offensive ac- actions. Like sometimes that's pretty good. Um, again, the mobility, the length, that allows for him to cover a lot of ground, uh, big time chase down block artist, uh, blocked multiple three point shots like on closeouts this year. Got one on Darius Days, who's a you know six eight six nine stretch five at LSU. Got one on uh, Viscovi from Tennessee, where it felt like Thor was like a step outside the free throw line, and he was still able to close out with his length and just cover so much ground to block this you know uh, top of the key three point attempt. Gets into passing lanes, deflections, pick six style um, interceptions. But again, those closeouts are a big issue. It's not for a lack of effort. Just like closes it down too hard. And again, gives up those uh, easy, easy drives. So that happened a lot this season. I imagine that will be something that happens um, in the NBA. And if you're thinking of JT Thor, you know, defensively, how he's going to line up. And maybe this gets into something else we can talk about, Richie, but just like, positionally like how's he going to be guarding pick and roll um you know if he's i'm guessing for the most part this is a guy you're going to be playing at the four um i think he has the ability to play uh, could have the ability to play a small ball five um or uh you know stretch five in some lineups and and even for charlotte's case because you have a guy like pj you already have like some flexibility um in these alignments but if you're playing jt thor at the four like you know he's going to be switching a lot of actions, you know, exchanges, handoffs that are on the ball. But when he's off the ball, you know, he's going to be the guy that's backside help. You know, he's the the guy that's got to be able to slide over and help on the pick and roll or, or, or be, be aware of a cut or whatever. And so, you know, I think that's going to take some time and work because I, I don't think he's, he's quite there from a defensive processing standpoint. But, again, the length, the ground coverage is really good. The motor, good. Um, and some of the defensive instincts are are also pretty good. And, and I do think, too, like Thor, um, in terms of like, you know, how his ability to potentially play the five, um, you know, there are some good flashes of rib protection. He has that versatility, the ability to get out and switch. Like he switched in pick and roll a lot this year. Also played to the level of the screen some, but like, um and in maybe even a little bit of drop but like you're not going to use jt thor you know as a, as a drop guy in the, in the in the nba you know you're going to switch or have him come up to the level or play close to the level but um so again i think he has some capabilities to play to play some five in the nba but the lack of physicality um his he's not a great rebounder you know i don't think he's quite there to like anchor a defense i mean who, who knows if he'll actually get there i think he can really be like a a good you know, a guy that is uh, an event creator defensively and gives you some rim protection and some versatility with the switch. But, um, you know, I, I think his, the minutes of him playing center might be, uh, you know, a little bit like team and lineup dependent. So, mm-hmm. but, but, but I, but I do sort of like uh, some of the flashes on that end as well. I mean, it's not the exact same player, but it sounds a lot like Kai Jones in terms yeah. of, you know, he, he, you know, realistically or idealistically, you would want him to be a small ball five. But some of the uh, concerns in terms of his physicality, like you mentioned, it, he just can't. He just can't right now be a, be a five. So, um, Brian, I want to I want you to give me an underrated aspect of his game that probably should get highlighted more that doesn't. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, we talked about the shot, and I, and I guess that is sort of so, something that sort of people are talking about uh, a little bit more, but. I, I guess for this, for the sake of this, like it, his the let's like I guess maybe zero in on the movement shooting, which again I don't think this is like something that's like necessarily flying under the radar. If you're paying attention to JT Thor as a prospect, you know, like you know what he's capable of doing. But I do like, uh, I mean, it is just cool to see a guy that's almost six ten with a seven three wingspan being able to come off down screens. Or, or pick and pop and attack a closeout like that is pretty special um again though that is certainly like a part of the package and if you're drafting him you know it's because you're hoping to like build something 
um, you know, off of that. The pick and roll, like him being used as a screener is interesting. Um, it has the ability to screen, roll, post up against the switch, like if he was working with Sharif Cooper, you know, try to get on the offensive glass again if he's got a if he has a switch. I think his touch in that mid post area is not too bad and is that perhaps another sort of like um worthy indicator for him as a as a shooter and how he projects to the to the next level uh, but really like he look you know he's most comfortable being able to slip or, or pop into space and, and and be a guy that can that can get into space and then and then play off some sort of advantage that's created with the screen but we've talked about this with Kai Jones and we've talked about it as it relates to guys on the roster like PJ Washington Miles Bridges just like the, the the threes and the fours and the fives, Gordon Hayward's like this too. Just like as you're thinking about how you're partnering like the big wings on the roster or like the hybrid forwards or the fives on the roster, you got to be thinking about how they work as like screen partners with LaMelo, right? Like if you're thinking, if we're zeroing in on on on, on Thor with Charlotte, right. like I, I do like some of the stuff he does as a guy that can – screen and then get get into space and then again he has the ability to 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 attack closeouts when he picks when he picks and pops and you get a hard close and like you know that would pair nicely with mellow but you know he's not like um at this point he's not like a you know rim running like lob bot you know like that's not you know it's not quite what his game is he's certainly more more comfortable going into space so I don't know, like overlooked the aspect of his game. I just think is probably I, I don't even think it's overlooked. Maybe the best way to think of it is like it's my favorite part of his game. But that ability to pop into space and then have options off of that. Either get the shot off or 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 look to attack. And again, there are some there are little bits of passing and creation creation flashes in those moments too that really sort of like jump out and make you think like, wow, what what could this guy be actually if he could if he really could develop and sort of put it all together? Yeah, I actually didn't know that about him in terms of the movement shooting. I knew that a lot of his shots from behind the arc were assisted on, but I didn't realize that he was coming off pin downs of maybe as much as maybe you're explaining it. Um, so yeah, obviously not having watched as much on JT Thor, I knew this guy as a as a catch and shoot guy, but I guess you know the movement shooting that that sounds pretty cool out of a you know six nine guy. So yeah. Um, Flipping it to the opposite end, the pessimistic side, what's the biggest concern that you have with him on the next level? Yeah, I mean, I do think it is sort of like the the team defense, right? Because he is pretty comfortable like guarding on the perimeter and like moving laterally, but it is those it is those hard closeouts, and it is sort of like the the processing and the feel as an away as an off ball team defender, and I, and I think that's something that. Um, is going to be a vulnerable ability of his, especially when the margin for error reduces and his athleticism can't make up for quite as many sort of like, uh, you know, mistakes or omissions or whatever. But like, that's, that's true of a lot of like young, you know, a lot of young fours or or fives and, um, and all that can really help that is, you know, one or one of the things that can help that is him playing basketball, playing a lot of it. And, and getting in with an NBA team and working on development, which gets back to what we spoke about at the top of this, of like the advantage of getting JT Thor, drafting him a year early, getting him into your system, getting him those development reps, getting him, you know, game reps or G League reps, whatever, like really investing in that um, and just seeing like how, what level you can get to him uh, defensively. Because if he can stay on the floor defensively, you know, if the shot translates, which you and I feel pretty good about, and you could do some stuff with him moving him around with the shot as a screener, um, you know, an occasional movement shooter, well, then now you've got like a, you know, a guy that could be a real piece for you, give you some rim protection, give you some stretch offensively, give you a guy that can go after a closeout that can, that can help you sort of like build advantage, not be like the advantage creator, but can, that can build off the, the initial advantage. And then of course the, the ability to stay on the court defensively, um, but I do think that's going to, that's going to take some time. Yeah. Yeah. It's it, with the Hornets. I, I know that one player is not going to solve the defensive issues, but 
I, if, if I'm looking for one quality out of the guy that I draft at number 11, I, I feel like I've ha- got to have some promise on the defensive side of the court and not have so many holes on that end. And yeah. again, it's, it's, it's a team thing. It's, it's not an individual prospect that's going to solve all the issues. And you never want to go into the draft thinking, hey, let's draft for fit or draft for a specific quality. But you know, with the way that we've watched the Hornets over the years, we, we just want the defense to be shored up and uh, having another guy that might take a couple years to – progress on that end kind of makes me a little bit queasy but you could um, get i mean you they could get, they could draft jaden springer they could yeah, do yeah. that there there are some guys like look uh, we talked about dyer williams a while ago too i mean he's gonna have to get a lot stronger right but i do think someone like like zai is someone that can 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 come in and give you you know perimeter defense on the basketball plus some you know off the ball uh you know event creation stuff too but he's just gonna have to get uh, you know, a lot stronger and, and not, you know, sort of get clipped on as many ball screens as he does right now. But Springer is someone that I think could come in and and, and, and I really do think he could come in and help the defense uh, next season, even though he's one of the youngest guys, um, you know, in the draft. So it's like there, there are some of these guys, they've got to beef up the perimeter defense. Right. And obviously like, you know, adding someone at, at center is, is, is big and hopefully, you know, free agency is some place where they can they can really check that box because you know it's it's good unless it's unless it is someone like you know Isaiah Jackson or whatever you know it's going to be tough to get a, a you know a five in the door that I think is going to like even give you anywhere close to like you know winning defensive value you know not even like not even saying like Jackson would be a plus defender next season or whatever but like I think he could be okay and then eventually down the line be like a you know a, a good defensive big guy for you but. Um, that's why if they really want to, uh, you know, compete next season, you know, that's that's why I like that the cap space they have and, you know, free agency is so big for them at the center position, which you've been writing about at the site with guys, you know, profiling guys like Rashawn Holmes and Nerlens Noel. Like if they want to find that there are guys that are going to be available. They're just going to have to spend a little bit to do it. I don't know if the draft, at least for next season, is the best way to, right. to, to, to like achieve those goals. Agreed. Agreed. You're you're still on the draft. I've already moved on to free agency. I'm I'm done talking about draft. <laughs> I, I mean, they, I mean, they, dude, they're like separated by like three days. I know. So, that's crazy. Is crazy. so you're not you're not like you're not you're uh you're just being slightly uh you're only being like a day or two ahead here. Yeah. Like it is going to be a really weird turnaround. It is uh, with draft and in free agency, and then right into summer league. So yeah. um, and then there will actually be you know time to catch a breath after that um but yeah it's it's uh it, like there's the next couple of weeks are going to be nuts with the with the nba at large and, and even the hornets all right last question for you uh on jt thor he did work out for charlotte or he has worked out for charlotte i don't think it's going to be wise to draft him at 11 but i also don't think he's going to be there at 56 so yeah. uh, for him to end up in charlotte it's probably going to have to take a trade so with all his defensive concerns, his his strength concerns, do you see this guy fitting in with the Hornets roster, or is it one of those things where he's just like a nice prospect, but hey, you know, maybe not on the Hornets? Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things where, uh, you know, if they did this, again, this is a hypothetical draft trade that we've talked about a couple of times now. It's one that's just, it's too good to be true, so it's not going to happen. But like the, uh, the deal with the Thunder, that would send 16 and 18 to Charlotte for 11, you know, using pick 18 or whatever on JT Thor is like fine, you know? And, and yes, that would be a, like, I, I think it's, you use the draft to, to, to select talent, to select upside. And for a team like Charlotte that is interested in, and again, we don't think Thor is like a full-time five or anything, but to give you another hybrid front court option that can that can run pick and pop pairs well with Melo gives you a little bit more rim protection potentially if he develops, you know. So yes, I do actually think um, he would make sense as a as a development piece for Charlotte. You know, if if they did the deal with Oklahoma City that I just mentioned, or if they did the one with Houston for twenty three and twenty four, um, and you know he was available if he was still available at twenty three or twenty four, yeah, it'd be. Yeah, I'd be all on board with JT Thor as a pick, sort of like in that range. I, I, I like him a lot, actually, as a prospect and, and think he would make a lot of sense with the Hornets, knowing that, like, he he's not he won't be ready to, like, you know, help right. play winning basketball for, you know, a year or two, or if, if not, maybe a little bit longer than that.